Claire lives in Nazing in West Essex. Her company encourages people to talk about death, dying and bereavement. We all know that we are not immortal and we're going to die. What the pandemic, what the pandemic has done is really um, made that part of the conversation. And whilst that's a horrific thing, um, there is an element of that which actually says to have those conversations about I'm scared or these are the things that worry me about um, dying or these are the plans that I have or haven't made. Um, that, that is one of those small little positives that's come out of it. We know that talking about anything eases anybody's pain or level of anxiety. The pandemic has resulted in more people having conversations about death. We've all been shocked by, by what we're seeing. There's a lot more curiosity or consciousness to talk about the fact that we are going to die. In March, Claire became ill with suspected COVID-19. Initially, after the first week, I, I then thought, oh, I'm going to get a bit better. By the end of week two, I was absolutely just shot away. Um, the following six weeks are probably the hardest six weeks of my life. Aches and pains and not being able to breathe and worried that I was going to have to go into hospital and all that sort of stuff. But um, luckily I didn't. Yeah, anybody that's, that's experienced it, just absolutely scary. I had two weekends where I thought, that's it, I'm off because I couldn't breathe. Claire was impressed with her GP's response during that time. My local GP services were way beyond my expectation, like way beyond my expectation. Ran out of HRT, that was the first thing, rang up and I'd been poorly. I need this and then I was like, actually, I'm really not very well. I think I've I've had all of these symptoms. And they were really good. They're like, no, no, you need to speak to a doctor. And I was talking to a doctor within, within 10 minutes. And then when I got poorly again the week later I went up and said mm, it's really not right um straight through straight through to the doctor um there was no ifs or buts really good conversations really thorough questioning um I was then prescribed antibiotics to try and stop any sort of secondary lung infection while Claire was recovering a family friend fell ill it was a shock um, both him and his wife were in hospital with COVID um, she came home he didn't I do try and practice what I preach in terms of trying to have the difficult conversations. We have talked a lot about Trevor and we've talked about the funeral and we've talked about the impact afterwards and we've talked about his wife and his family. But Claire's greatest worry has been her brother. My brother's terminally ill and the most worrying thing was they just moved. No one to really help and support them as a family unit. And they've had to go through that change of uh, provision and support. So um, through the hospice that they were using on the Isle of Wight to a hospice up in Norfolk, different oncologists, different doctors, all through lockdown. And I just wanted I wanted to wrap my brother in cotton wool and keep him at home. So that was probably the most scary thing and frustrating. Claire contacted Paul's new local hospice during lockdown. I spoke to them first, actually. I rang them and said, look, these guys need support. I mean, hospices provide some amazing support for families. So I rang my brother and I was just like, look, you guys are finding it really tough. Just, I've spoken to them. Um, it's way easier if you talk to your local, if you talk to your new GP and get a referral, they can then just quickly go off and running. I had a conversation with him one day and the next day he was then talking to the psychologist, which was, was brilliant. And my sister-in-law then got some support. Um, so all still remote. However, there is that sort of like support in there, which is definitely, definitely needed. Claire has found it difficult not being able to attend appointments with Paul. I try and go and support them, ask the questions. I'm not even there to do that. And I don't think, I don't think my brother suddenly going, oh, I've got my sister on the phone, um, would, would, um, would necessarily be favourable. Um, so I do feel like I've abandoned them a little bit like that. Paul had moved so that the family were able to spend more time together. Made a big lifestyle change, big move at a critical time. You know, he doesn't know how long he's got left um, to go and spend time with the family. Go to the beach, go for walks, do this, do that, and to suddenly have, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks of lockdown. Super frustrating. Claire plans to visit her family in Norfolk shortly. 
but it won't include Paul. We're just going to drive up in the car, wind the windows down, have a chat with them on the curb. And that will be it. Yeah. It's really difficult to work out what to do. I think for everybody, just really difficult. Mm -hmm.